Well, me like her, I was a 15 year old father and I was obviously the son of the pastor. And this put me in a very precarious position in life uh, because I had to grow up in the church and religious people nearly destroyed me um, emotionally and spiritually. And I developed, I developed uh, quite a few uh, complexes that were really designed by the enemy to stagnate my purpose and to abort the greatness that God had on the inside of me. Um, one thing I learned early on in life through my, through my personal pain and through my personal struggles uh, is that my life, your life, our lives, <clears throat> are always on purpose and God positions us. Now listen to this very carefully. God positions us through the good and even the bad that we might be in position to position others for their greatness. When you think about the life of Joseph, Joseph went through uh, the rejection of family, the abandonment of brothers, um, he, he was made a slave, he, well, he started off in a pit, he was made a slave, he went to prison, and he earned or deserved none of that. But ultimately, in the life of Joseph, when he, when he rises to a place of power, through all of that pain, all of that obvious pain, he rises to a place of power, and he meets his brothers again, and he feeds them, and he nourishes them, and he says, you thought this for evil, but God meant it unto good that I might be alive and in position to nourish you. Everything that we go through, everything that God has allowed you to endure, to suffer, uh, to go through in life is a part of God's process of bringing you into a position of greatness and your greatness will be determined by your capacity to be able to use your story, use your experiences, along with the anointing of transparency, to be able to use your pain as the balm of healing for others. Now, what we, what we have to be careful of, what we have to be careful of, which is the thing my father helped me through early on in life, is that we can become bitter about things that God is really using to set us up for greatness. And when you read the story of Joseph, you'll never find where Joseph had a moment where it seems like he was angry or bitter. Joseph seemed to just kind of go with the flow, whatever God put before him that day, he seemed to kind of go with the flow. He never allowed his emotions to become toxic because of the present dilemmas. And likewise, you have to understand that what you're going through today may very well be the handiwork of God setting you up for greatness tomorrow. You cannot allow this thing, your history or even your present condition to make you bitter. Hebrews 12 and 15 says that uh, no root of bitterness should be in you because a root of bitterness will spring up and trouble you. And then it says, and thereby many will be defiled. You have to make certain that you get the roots of bitterness out of your heart. And I believe with all of my, my heart, my soul and mind that Dr. Stribling during this conference, the 16th through the 18th, if I remember the dates correctly, will be working on the things that will help you to process the, per process the hurt, process the pain, and move into your destiny with clarity. We have to detox from the pain. There are many of you that are on here tonight. You've gone through similar stories. You've had 
you know, you've been let down, you've been rejected, you've been abandoned, uh, you've been abused, you've been, you've been hurt, you've been wounded, you've gone through all of that. And the message tonight between the three of us is that God is using all of this to bring you to a place of prominence. Your pain always has purpose. I was sharing with my wife and she used it in, um, in the swim conference. One day I was just sitting and I was meditating on pain, P-A-I-N. And I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not an acronym person, P-A-I-N. God said, it stands for pay attention, I'm near. Pay attention, I'm near. You have to, first of all, understand that your pain always has purpose. Everything that I went through, watch this, everything I went through in life, the things that made me want to, uh, even at a certain point in my youth, commit suicide, didn't want to be here, are the very things now that God uses to bring deliverance and breakthrough to people all over the nation. You may not see it now, but the pain that you currently feel and have felt will ultimately work to the glory of God. God will even get glory out of this. Now, detoxing from the pain. Number one, you have to embrace, watch this. You have to embrace and accept the forgiveness of God. You have to embrace and accept the forgiveness of God. Because quite often when we have gone through traumatic experiences and when our lives have been turned upside down and inside out, we oftentimes leave those situations or those predicaments feeling guilty. You have to, number two, release the people that hurt you. You got to let them go. You got to let them go. You got to release the people that hurt you. Releasing the people that hurt you is about you being empowered to move into your destiny rather than, rather than being secure to a person and a situation in your past that was hurtful and painful. You got to let them go. Then you got to lock in on your vision. See, you know that you're locked in on your vision when you're, you're not focusing on what happened, how it set me back but you're more locked in on where I'm going and what I have to do to get there. See, you're detoxing from the pain and then you have to embrace God's scary plan for your life. You have to see God's perspective of who you are. And when you see God's perspective of who you are, it will scare you. When you get a reality, a revelation of who God says you are, it will scare you, but you got to embrace it and you got to say, be it unto me. Be Like Mary said, be it unto me. You're going to have a son you never had sex. Be it unto me. Going to be the son of God. Be it unto me. You got to say, be it unto me. If you don't deal with the pain as I close, if you don't resolve the pain, unresolved pain, watch this. This is the purpose of the diamond experience to resolve the issues that might hinder destiny. And what is your ultimate destiny? God wants to use you, he wants to use me to impact the lives of others. Every purpose is to impact somebody else's life. Unresolved pain turns into a monument. When you don't deal with the pain, your life turns into a monument. You build a monument and a monument is nothing but a dead representation of something from the past. Number two, unresolved pain is contagious. If you do not deal with the pain, the pain in your life will spill over into your children, into your friendships, into every significant relationship, and it will poison your world. Unresolved pain, number three, is the thief of purpose and creativity. You gotta get rid of the pain and the bitterness. It will stifle your capacity to create. It will stifle your sense of purpose. It will rob you 
of years and even the understanding of why you're here. And then number four, unresolved pain becomes spiritual gates for the enemy to constantly invade your life. You open the door for Satan to come into your life and to bring and to usher in those things that will hamper and hinder your full development as God intended. You got to get free. You must become whole because God is counting on you to touch the next generation. So all of us tonight, all of us on some level or another, my wife is in here tonight. My wife has a testimony that will blow your mind. A lot of you who think, wow, I've had it rough in life. If you hear my wife's testimony, but she's taken all of that pain and she's allowed the Holy Spirit to transform it into power. And now her life and her ability to be able to process that pain in a divine way, she's touching the lives of women all over the nation that many of us cannot even reach. Come on.